Markets can also be classified by how the securities are traded. The three main categories are quote-driven markets, where investors trade with dealers, order-driven markets, where rules are used to match buyers and sellers, and brokered markets, where investors use brokers to locate a counterparty to a trade. In quote-driven markets, traders transact with dealers or market makers who post bid and ask prices. The dealers maintain an inventory of securities. Quote-driven markets are commonly known as over-the-counter markets because securities used to be literally traded over the dealer's counter in the dealer's office. Now, most trades in OTC markets are conducted electronically. Most securities, other than stocks, trade in quote-driven markets. Stocks, on the other hand, are mostly traded in exchanges or automated trading systems. These are mainly order-driven markets, where rules match the buy and sell orders. In a typical exchange or trading system, you have multiple buyers and sellers entering their order at different times and different bid and ask prices. Order matching rules determine which order gets priority over others and how the orders are matched. Price priority is the number one criterion, where the most aggressively priced orders get priority. This means that the highest priced bid orders and the lowest priced ask orders go first. If orders are at the same prices, a secondary precedence rule gives priority to non-hidden orders. If that's also the same, then the earliest arriving orders get the priority. These three rules encourage traders to price their trades aggressively, display their entire orders and trade earlier, thereby improving liquidity. Let's have a little fun. Based on these rules, how should the buy and sell queues look at 12.01pm after the last order was processed? You may want to pause the video to work this out. Alright, let's work this out chronologically. At 9am, Brandon's order is the only order in the buy queue. At 9.30am, Susan's sell order goes into the sell queue. At 10.30am, Bernard's buy order has the same price as Brandon's, so it's not a better bid. However, Bernard's order is not hidden, so it has priority over Brandon's hidden order. At 11am, Beatrice's buy order has a lower bid than the existing orders. As such, it is placed at the back of the queue. At 11.30am, Sam's sell order has a lower ask price than Susan's. It's therefore placed ahead of Susan's order. And at 12pm, Stephen's sell order was entered. Since the ask price is the lowest, it's placed at the head of the sell queue. And as the limit price of $199.80 meets the buy price of the orders in the buy queue, orders were matched. Bernard's and Brandon's orders were fully filled and taken out of the queue, while 6 out of 10 shares for Beatrice's order were filled. Stephen's order was fully filled and taken out of the queue. So this is how the buy and sell queues look at 12.01pm after Stephen's order was filled. Now if you noticed, Bernard and Brandon expected to buy at $199.90, but Stephen actually was willing to sell at a lower price of $199.80. So which price should these trades be transacted at? With that, we need to discuss our second set of rules, which is trade pricing rules. In continuous trading markets such as this, the discriminatory pricing rule is often practiced. Under this rule, the limit price of the order that arrived first determines the trade price. So, as in this case, Bernard and Brandon placed their buy orders before Stephen, so the trades should be transacted at their limit price of $199.90. The sales of six shares to Beatrice should be transacted at $199.80, as this is the limit price for Beatrice. Hence this rule is termed discriminatory, as one single order by Stephen can be transacted at different prices. Besides the discriminatory pricing rule, another common trade pricing rule is the uniform pricing rule, which is used in call markets. Under this rule, all orders trade at the same price, which is the price that results in the highest volume of trading. Crossing networks are trading systems that match traders who are willing to trade at prices obtained from other exchanges. 
The price is often the midpoint between the best bid and ask quotes published by the exchange. This pricing rule is called a derivative pricing rule because the price is derived from another market. And the last category of secondary markets is brokered markets. Quite simply, brokers help their clients find a counterparty to execute a trade. This service is usually for assets that are unique or illiquid like very large blocks of stock, real estate and artwork. As such, assets have limited buyers, dealers typically do not make a market for them and so the buyers and sellers can only turn to such brokered markets for trade. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.